So the WNBA playoffs have started and I'm at home all day today. That's all I'm going to do is just watch basketball all day. Basketball has become almost the centerpiece of my joy these days simply for the fact that I just I I've done things that I enjoy but I've clearly neglected my love for watching basketball over the years. Yeah, we have the Warriors, which I'm so grateful for because we're spoiled here in the Bay Area. Between the Warriors, even the Niners going back and forth to the Super Bowl, the Giants winning all those World Series when they did, it's been almost like a 14-year run of just championships, finals, Super Bowls, so I've been on this kind of high with sports, but it still felt like I was just going through with emotions. You know, I, I love those teams. I enjoy watching them. But there was like a different connection I feel when I watch the WNBA. I think because it brings back thoughts of like my childhood and memories and being in high school and how trying out for basketball really impacted not just my youth or my high school experience, but my whole life. You know, I tried out my freshman year for basketball naturally, right? I was really good in middle school. I was always put on the teams of the grades above me. So when I was in sixth grade, I played on the seventh grade team. Seventh grade, I played on the eighth grade team. And then finally in eighth grade, I played with my classmates, but then... I took that same mindset of like, I'm going to play hard, I'm going to do me and do what I can to get noticed by these coaches, you know, because my dream was I'm going to play college basketball, I'm going to go to Stanford, I'm going to play under Tara Vanderbilt, and she's going to be my coach. And that was that, that was that on that, that was my dream as a young sixth grader, seventh grader, you know, watching the Olympics and dreaming about that life and wanting to play at the collegiate level not really knowing you know what it actually took or required you know playing at certain schools all that stuff money you know I wasn't thinking about that I was so naive but coming into my freshman year trying out for basketball I went hard every practice you know I showed up and I remember our last day of practice or tryouts i'm sorry the last day of tryouts we were doing you know suicides and i think i've talked about this but watching these playoffs again and just knowing where my life has ended up in the best way possible it was my actions even back then as a young 14 year old that have still impacted me to this day and you know as you're doing you know the suicides back and forth and if you've ever played sports or, or basketball in particular you know how torturous <laughs> suicides are. They're called that for a reason. And I just remember my classmate who was way better than me as a point guard. I was a defender. I was a strong defender that wasn't afraid to shoot. You know, so I was more like a three, right? And at the time, I was this height at 14, you know, so I'm considered tall. Uh, but of course, you get to high school and you realize like, oh my God, there are way, there are people way taller than me in this world. So at tryouts, you know, we're going back and forth and it's the last one. So I always was, it was ingrained in my mind, like it's not how you start, it's how you finish. So I remember the coach and I didn't know he was the varsity coach. I just knew he was facilitating the practices. I didn't know anything. It was my freshman year. We're running up and down the court. And he goes, all right, last one, last one. So I start sprinting. And mind you, I'm dead tired because we've been doing these for like five minutes, just nonstop. And I didn't come in here in shape. I just came in young. <laughs> and I remember sprinting that last set of suicides on my own and trying to encourage everyone. And no one listened. And he pointed me out and he was like, hey, what's your name? I told him my name. The results end up getting posted maybe a week later or so. I don't remember the timeline. And I made JV and my friend who was a hell of a basketball player, one of the best I had known up until that point. She could shoot, she could guard, she could dribble. All the things was cut. So one, I learned a few things. One, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. You know, you got to go hard no matter how much 
it hurts or you're struggling in that moment, you know it's 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 about to be over. Just finish it out strong. Two, uh, you could be the best and and still not get you know acknowledged or accepted. Uh, three, there are a lot of politics when it comes to sports and advancing in this world, and that was a sad reality that I had to realize in that moment was that you could be the best of the best and still get overlooked. You can still get cut. You could still get chosen over other people that may have paid their way into it or look better or or fit the part better aesthetically, whatever the case may be. And that was a sad reality. So I went through a lot of sad moments with basketball that I didn't quite face head on until now. <laughs> You know, and I don't mean like today. I mean in the last five years, I would say. I, I really started to face those moments of rejection head on because my freshman year after playing basketball, I really had a hard time keeping up in a way. Like I was really good, but I wasn't good enough to be a starter but then I was good enough to be on the summer league for both JV and varsity it was an interesting transitional phase for me and I was really struggling with damn I just want to play like why isn't why am I not getting the chance uh so summer league comes around you know they're having me travel everywhere my and my parents are the type that go to every games travel um and I was very shy. I was very antisocial. So I didn't really hang out with the teammates. You know, I felt like everyone had already known each other. I was so uncomfortable. Oh, damn, I'm watching the game as well. And New York is up 81, Atlanta 63 with three minutes left in the fourth quarter. And it's just game one of the first round. Um, but I just remember going to these tournaments every weekend, you know, just wishing I could play. And then when I would play, I just was so I just wasn't my best. It, it it took a really big toll on me, just on, on like my security in myself, my my love for basketball, um, to the point where I ended up just I just stopped playing in, in that next year. I think I closed out that summer, and I was like, I don't want to play basketball anymore. I don't feel like I'm getting a fair enough opportunity. I feel like I'm not getting the attention that I need at practice. And I didn't know how to advocate for myself. I didn't know how to speak up for myself. I only knew how to just do the work, you know, and, and I got to a point where doing the work wasn't enough. And I think about who I am today and how I've had to learn how to advocate for myself, how I've, how I've had to learn to initiate conversations, how I've had to learn how to be a better communicator, how I had to learn to remove some of my emotions from decisions and just take action and take risks, you know, and, and, and put in double, triple the work in order to just compete, you know, and, and I let go of a lot of that. And don't get me wrong, when I played soccer, it was some of the best me athletically that I've ever given to the point where I got recognized and other colleges want me to, wanted me to play for them, but I just didn't love I did not love soccer the way that I loved basketball. And, to, and the fact that I was going to get those opportunities through soccer. And I also played softball. That was like my second, like my backup. Like I was so good at softball. And then when that dream didn't come into fruition, like I just took a lot of hits because growing up, I thought sports was going to be my ticket, my ticket out, you know, and, and it was in a way I got to travel the world. I got to... <laughs> Uh, well, the country, at least, I I went all over the, the nation, road trips, tournaments, and let's get some better lighting. <laughs> and ultimately, it still just didn't pan out the way I had, I had envisioned, but now I'm starting to have a greater appreciation for those moments and those experiences simply because I got through them, you know, but now I feel like insert reinserting basketball into my life, this is, I'm in my office, Reinserting basketball into my life at 40 years old has has really been a, a great source of joy for myself because sometimes I would sit at home with nothing to do and only working on the business and, you know, or maybe I was just hung over. You know, I didn't have anything to look forward to. You know, I'm, I'm at home, I'm, I'm by myself, I'm single, no kids. Although I do have uh, 
ton of nieces and nephews I could go out of my way to go hang out and call friends and family that I could call. There was something about me needing to have my thing. I just no longer had my thing. You know, I talk about going to find, you know, taking initiative in your life. And that's, that's where I'm at right now is learning how to take initiative when it comes to things that I enjoy, things I love and, and the people I love as well as not just doing everything that they want to do, but inviting them into my world, you know, and I had to rebuild my world in the last five years. And I feel like this big piece of basketball and even getting back in shape. And you guys saw me going on the courts every morning playing basketball. Um, it was, it, it, it's changed my life is what I'm saying. And I know that's a big, broad cliche statement, like, oh, my life has changed. But when I say that to break it down, I mean like my mood is better. I'm able to be social because I go live, I live stream the games. I'm able to meet new people around the world. And I didn't realize how much I, 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 th I thrived in that. You know, when I played sports, I was amongst a crowd. I fed off of their energy. I loved that, I loved that. And it wasn't until I played softball up until I was like 30 and it was it wasn't until I ruptured my Achilles when I started to even leading up to that point I'd been with this team for almost five years maybe longer than that and we finally made the championship and I go and rupture my Achilles you know but leading up to that I was like dang I really wish my friends and my family would come watch my games like I wish I had people in the stands uh you know just to come support and cheer me on and i didn't realize like i had missed that so much so it's not to say that i need an audience but it does help to have something to cheer for to be cheered on to be encouraged and i think we all to a certain extent need that on occasion so anyway basketball is so much fun it lifts my mood up it hypes me up even when my teams are losing I'm still in it and enjoying the process and being able to talk about it after the game, before the game, seeing, you know, the progression of them improving. I love it. And I don't know where it's going to take me or where I'm going with this, but I just know that I'm in it and I'm here with it and I'm grateful for it. So find your thing or things, you know, create your own world, invite people into your world. Of course, you know, in moderation or when you're ready and if they aren't receptive of your world then they don't need to be in it they can be in other parts of your world but maybe not your basketball world or, or your food world or your art world you know there's plenty of people out there that are going to enjoy what you do that appreciate what you do and you just have to go out and seek that and find your community and i think that's what it all came down to is like no matter how much i struggled or no matter how much i you know failed in life it all comes down to just being in your own world finding your world and then finding the community that will continue to uplift and encourage you so i hope i can be a part of your community and thank you for watching i was not anticipating this video to be this long but i'm just turning on the camera and talking that's my main goal even if i talk about things that i've already talked about or stories that i've already told I feel like you can extract different lessons and, and ideas from every story. You know, there's still moments in my life where I'm like, oh my God, that happened because this needed to happen. Or, you know, I hate that I had to go through this, but the outcome ended up being more positive than I even imagined, you know? So life, life is lifing and it's important that I'm, that I continuously document that and me becoming more of a homebody, you know, the percentage, the ratio is, is definitely more home than outside. <laughs> that if I wait to go outside to vlog, I will never vlog. So you guys are going to get a lot of content from me at home. I'm in the process of redesigning the insides, the inner workings of my home. I had to take a lot of time to release a lot of big pieces that, you know, I'm only one person with, with so much time and, and access to, you know, uh, vehicles at, at, at certain times I, I it took the timeline took a while for me um, to get here where I'm at where I could finally like 
start thinking about color schemes and things like that. So I will bring you guys along for that journey as we are continuing to just be at home. You know, love your space, love the environment that you create and build for yourself, not just the worlds and, and the hobbies that we, we, we maintain, but also just like your home space. Even if you only have a room or you have to share a room, make that section of yours yours. It, it will help you with your mental health. You know, if there's a part of your house that needs cleaning, just go clean it. Just go clean it. You know what I mean? Or if someone's not picking up the slack on their end, like make it a, a, a team building experience. I don't care who they are in your life. Like sometimes, we, you know, the, our level of experience is childlike. Maybe we weren't taught certain things. Or maybe I hate doing the dishes. I think I've said that multiple times, but I hate doing the dishes. But the way I make it fun for myself is I'll play my favorite podcast. I'll set up my phone or I'll put a show on or a movie and I'll just get to work. And then in no time, my dishes are done and put away and dry. So do your best to make activities in life fun. And I guarantee your whole perspective on, on things and people and yourself, yourself especially, will improve and change. And it's all about loving yourself each and every day. You know, even if it's 1% more, sometimes we fall back, but then just keep pushing forward. That's all I got to say. My name is Lily and this is Fire Life because life is a blessing. So go have fun. See ya.